Welcome to this Toolhound Learning Center video where we'll look at browser configurable settings that determine how Toolhound will work for your organization. Some of these functions are critical, so access should be restricted to your Toolhound administrator. When you open the settings page, the company tab is displayed by default. The required information here is the company name, contact name, phone and email address. The company name can be changed at any time and this does not impact the company alias that you use when logging in. You also have a logo that you can add. If you have one, go ahead and use it because it can appear on various reports. And on the Options tab, the default currency is set up at the time of installation, so unless you need a custom currency or an error was made, there's no need to change this. For multinationals or when working cross-border, you can select multi-currency. And for anything beyond the basic Canadian and US currencies, you can add them under the currencies. And also, if you have a requirement to change a password every so many days, you can set the number of days in the password expires in field. The authentication tab will look similar to this one depending on your configuration. Here we see all possible options available for additional authentication when logging in through the browser. Along the left is single sign-on, also known as SSO. This is already enabled and available for cloud subscribers for both Microsoft and Google. For on-premise installations, special setup and configuration is required by your IT personnel. Please check the help documentation for information. Disable local login prevents logging in with a password if SSO is enabled. 2FA on the right side, also known as two-factor authentication, is a type of multi-factor authentication. Specifically, after logging in, a code from an authenticator app as designated by your organization must be entered in Toolhound. It's not the texting of a code to your phone. 2FA is used only with a password login. So if SSO is enabled and disable local login is selected, this option will not be displayed. If 2FA is in use, each user must configure their own two-factor authentication. The email tab has several helpful settings. Most of the left-hand column defines the technical parameters of the account used to send email, and it overrides anything configured in the background. So if you're on cloud, it's already configured to send email from Toolhound. You don't need to do anything or add anything to these fields unless you want to send email from your own email server. This can be tricky. Consult your own internal um, mail administrators. If you're on-premise, the more secure option is to configure this on the server. Check the help documentation for details on how to do this. At the bottom of the left-hand column, CC Supervisor will send a copy to the supervisor of the entity when emailing from the personnel transaction history automatically. Reply to will override the default reply to email on Toolhound generated emails. For example, on the cloud, the reply to is an unmonitored email address. Frequently, people will reply to an outstanding issues report or another scheduled report where they intend for the reply to go back to the toolcrib. However, it winds up in a black hole. Set the reply to to redirect all replies to a specific internal email address and internal support email. By default, the bug reports and feedback emails with the star and bug on the menu go directly to the Toolhound support team. You can redirect those emails to an internal help desk by entering that email address here. If you've watched the Customize Your Homepage message panel video, this looks familiar. Here you can enter the message that appears on the homepage in the message panel and on the mobile app. It supports HTML tags and you can update it as often as you wish. For cloud accounts, additional messages from Toolhound might appear in the message panel right above whatever you enter here. For on-premise systems, you can also configure a static message on the server that will appear above whatever text is entered here. Consult the help documentation for more details on how to do this. Let's review what we've learned so far. Restrict settings access to administrators to avoid problems, especially with automatic emails such as reports. 
Your company logo can appear on reports. Additional authentication options of SSO, single sign-on, and 2FA, two-factor authentication, are available in addition to passwords or in place of passwords. Route emails and replies to ensure the correct individuals are kept up to date. Edit the home message panel as often as you wish to communicate information to users. On-premise installation should coordinate with their IT personnel and consult our documentation for additional setup and configuration. Thanks for watching this video from the Toolhound Learning Center. For any questions, contact our support team and remember, subscribe and hit the notification bell.